Good Vibes Only is here to take you on a journey to discover the weird and wacky world of wellness. It's brought to you by the globally renowned skin and wellness expert, Marie Reynolds, who holds over 36 years of experience within the skin and well-being industry. Each week, Marie shares her own holistic lifestyle hacks and chats to other leading wellness experts to find out their good vibe story, discussing how they deal with day-to-day -day stress, anxiety, sleep, and skin issues. Listen in as Marie explores why, when it comes to our health and wellness, we need to look beyond the linear, question the norm, and think outside the box. I am back here with the amazing Dr. Ye. Your podcast episode was the highest rating thus far. <laughs> so it's Good. obviously something that people are really, really interested in. For those that haven't listened to the podcast, if you just want to introduce yourself again, and then we are going to talk all about female health today. I am um, a Chinese medicine and acupuncturist. I came from China. In 2003, I graduated my PhD, studied in Guangzhou, and then I decided to start a new job, a new life in the UK. So therefore, here I am. 20 years on, I'm still in here. <laughs> and looking, looking as fresh as a daisy. You, don't, you only look about 20. <laughs> yeah, so at the moment I have my own practice, and, but also I'm teaching in different places. I have a job in LACA, the London Academy of Chinese Acupuncture. Mm -hmm. And also I'm um, like visiting lecturers uh, in various countries, that's like Switzerland and uh, Poland. And that's a new job coming on next year, possibly in Ireland. So, Oh, my gosh. So busy, yeah. busy man. You're always yeah. lecturing and teaching. Yeah. So we spoke about the different characters of chi last time. But today mm. I wanted to touch on female health because obviously it's one of those subjects that are always of interest, especially with women going through the menopause. And we'll talk about the menopause today. But I just want to also touch on period issues, endometriosis, PCOS, because mm -hmm. with my background with energy medicine and now with traditional Chinese medicine, it's all about energetic processes and looking further and wider than the linear approach mm -hmm. of just heavy periods or periods that are scanty or missing periods. Mm -hmm. So let's first start about why it's important to understand when we do a consultation, the age, the menarche of the female. Why is it important to know whether they are starting their periods before the age of 12 or between 12 and 15 or post 15. What is that significance? In Chinese classic book, uh, Yellow Emperor's book, like Huang Di Nei Jing, this is the, the Bible of Chinese medicine. I only had the chapter talking about particularly girls' and boys' development. And I'll mention about girls, it, their life stages in every seven years. So therefore, talking about that at age of seven, you're supposed to are doing what at age of 14 you're supposed to do what like so the the the, the first period should start around the, like the age 14 so that's mm -hmm. the, the girl supposed to be this is our ancestor believe this is the factory made you know so the setting of the factory is supposed to be yes okay. so a female cycle is in years of seven yes so yes. at the age of seven we're coming out of infancy coming into childhood yes. then at 14 yes. we're coming into yes. puberty yes that's right yes yeah so therefore, the modern times, so people are possibly like growing faster. But they, I think this is due to different various reasons. But a lot of them is to, is to do with the environment and also the diet. You know, people yeah. were fat, were different from the ancient times. Therefore, the development of girls are much quicker. But that has created many things because it is against the natural process. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if you start your period at age nine or at age 10, that's too soon, which would just speed up your, all your, your development and all your sort of aging process. Because, you know, human life is come, coming from this small childhood and into the puberty and then into this mid age. So they're set in different stages. Mm -hmm. But if you're bringing everything earlier, then it just means you're, you're, you're dying quicker. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. and your body is under stress, and that also can bring menopause uh, symptoms right. earlier as well. That's right, yes. Yeah, and also uh, women, the number of ova produced by women is determined. 
So then, you know, bond with that so much vulva, you're supposed to just have that much vulva to be released. Then, so every time you have a period, you have a process of ovulation. So what you're saying is that when a mm. female is born, they're born mm. with their already set amounts of ova, their eggs. Yeah, and then right, each yeah. time that they have their periods, that is mm-hmm. the set amount of eggs that they are going to yeah, release. So, use that. Yeah. so if they start mm. their periods early due to possibly hormones mm. in food, especially nowadays and yeah. preservatives yeah. and mm-hmm. their environment, mm. stress, those mm. eggs that are released, when they're released, they're released. That's so right, that yes. You will then yeah. get into your pores mm. earlier. Yes, yeah. And also, especially in a Western society, very strong of contraceptive, uh, you know, medication. So mm. girls are taking those contraceptive pills at too early, age, mm. which suppresses the natural process of the hormones. Mm. In the end, it was, you know, it's greatly affects their uh, fertilities and also the natural productions of hormones. Yeah. So before we talk about the different menstrual symptoms that can occur within a woman's cycle, let's just understand what are the different meridian or the different energetic factors that contribute to menses. So we have the kidneys, the spleen, the heart and the liver. Yeah. Well, there there are various uh, organs that contributing to the productions of period of menses. Uh, the most important one that to start the menses to open up the puberty age is the kidney, mm. right? Because the kidney is the one what we'll call it a prenatal energy uh, gauge or energy source. That means the essence of energy stored in kidney comes from be- even before the birth of the woman. Mm. That is the amount of energy you taken over from the parents, so that the parents giving to you as the foundation of the life to start with. So this is just the seeds that are growing from your from your life tree. So yeah. just briefly so it, explain what the yin and yang and kidney represent for. The yin represents the water, which means the nourishing force of the, the kidney or the life force. Then it also to fall the tree, to see, to start to open, to start to grow. So You're pushing and driving force. This is the vital energy, mm. which is related to the yang, it's the fire. So for anything that function in your body, need both type of energy. One is provide the fuel, one is provide the starting fire. Mm. For women to start the period, then you need to have certain amount of essence to produce that period in a form of like liquid. But then you also need a fire to set off the opening. Yeah. Yeah. So when we see these young girls, you know, with their backs bare and their bellies bare, it's not good in traditional Chinese medicine, is it? It's all no. about keeping everything warm because we need that fire warmth. We need that kidney energy to be strong. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if you expose your back, you expose your tummy for a very short time, it doesn't matter. It's mm. more a, you might just expose to the cold and then that's cold entering your body. That's coming in as a guest as a lot of what we call evil, external pathogenic factors. Mm. But if you're constantly having all these external pathogenic factors coming into your body, then they will use up your energy, use up your warming energy, which is the fire. Yeah. The yang. So in the end, it will suppress the yang's energy, causing the problems. Makes total sense. Mm. So we've got the kidneys that open the gate of development and help Mm. to support these menstrual cycles so that's Mm. the kidney that starts the essence so the kidneys in essence in every sense of the word um also contribute to the blood of menses yeah yeah kidney plays a role in the productions of the blood however there are many other organs involved in this process Mm. period comes out as a form of blood it's a liquid form of blood but it's rejected by the body However, it has to come in uh, from the foundation of the productions in the body. Mm. And the one that contributes most importantly is the spleen, which yeah. is related to your digestion, related to your metabolism, food and fluid. So you do need to have a very strong blood, uh, the, the spleen's function, to absorb what, whatever you're eating and then turning to those essence, what we call the food essence. And the, then the spleen will bring these food essence up into the heart and then in there heart as a factory mixing with various different things mm-hmm. and kidney is one of the organ that provides those firing force yes. to for those 
the process transformation from the food essence into the blood, put into the red stuff as the blood. Yes. And that will be bring back to the uterus to be created as a menses. To yeah. Please. So there's lots behind it. When I talk about all of the different functions of the kidneys essence and the spleen, it needs the food to bring nutrition and bring all of those vital mm. ingredients or components to make the blood. And then it's then brought into the heart and mm-hmm. then also stored in the liver. Yes. Yeah. Liver is always what we call is controller. It's a trafficking controller. And it's all is the door boy. So that means it will press the button to let door open for everything. Yeah. So including the period cycles. So yeah. liver is the one that really watching the clock and then doing its job. Yeah. So, so liver is to say, this is time for this hormone to be released, or this is a time for the blood to be released. It will press the button. Yeah. And there's so yeah. many different things to think about with mm. menses. It's not only these factors of the energetic processes that go into mm. the production of the menstrual cycle and the menstrual blood but it's also other factors that can be contributing to it so it can be linked in with the five elements whether the spleen is overacting on the liver and vice versa and all of the Mm. cycles of there is also the six evils that you've mentioned so it could be cold and heat and phlegm and etc all of these different things so it seems very very confusing but Mm. what I would say is that If people are having issues with their periods, be it dysmenorrhea, really painful periods, amenorrhea, periods that are missing or irregular, all of these factors are not just a labeled factor. It's really Mm. important to understand that we're not just 2D beings, we're more than that. So if we just quickly touch on what type of things, little clues that we can look at, because pain as well, the different characters of pain also Mm. gives us clues, doesn't it? So if if you can just give us some little indications of if you've got endometriosis, what things could possibly be linked to that. If Mm. you've got PCOS, which is polycystic ovary syndrome, if you can just give us an indication of what they may be and also Mm -hmm touch on possibly PMS because Mm -hmm. emotion is really important around periods and around menses and they can range from anxiety or anger or worry or stress depression all of these things so I'll hand over Mm -hmm. to you so you can just give us some indications. Uh, The Chinese medicine western medicine uh, varies in this way to understand the illnesses in Chinese medicine we don't normally have those names Right. Mm. So we possibly will name the condition when you have a uh, dysmenorrhea. We'll call it Tongjing, painful period. Yeah. And then there will be the, the general, we'll call it the disease name. But under the disease, there should be differentiation because when only by differential diagnosis uh, can you understand the illness. Mm. Right. So then doing this differentiation all come to the good understanding about the pathology that each of the organ or meridian involving in this. Mm. I read the patient's symptoms to figure out which organ is more playing a major role in mm. this a group of symptoms. Because he might be having this malaria, but then you also have other symptoms. Yeah. Like the PMS. So the conditions, the label with the Western medicine can be three or four more. Mm. But possibly in West in Chinese medicine, that would be just one label for that differentiation. As yeah. liver. So that's the difference. So wh- I will give what we call signature symptoms of each of the organs. Then you will know this possibly is related to this organ and we can work on that organ. Mm. Yeah. So periods are very much related to the kidneys and the liver. They are major two leading uh, roles. But then also they can be also related to the spleen and any others like pericardians or others. But I would say the first three leading roles in period associated conditions are the kidney, are the liver, and the spleen. Mm. So to do with the kidney, we also mentioned already the kidneys are yin and kidney yang. So if there's a problem with the kidney yin, normally it's what we call kidney yin deficiency, it means it don't have enough kidney yin. You don't have enough cooling and nourishing kidney essence so in that case if you look at all the symptoms that will be very much like showing the red flags one is night sweat 
feeling hot, hot flushes and night sweats. So all these symptoms happen for ladies who have typical kidney yin deficiency quite often. If they are like, they are still like in a young age before menopause, there will be night sweat or insomnia, like restlessness before period comes. Say a week or several days before period, they have hot feet, hot hands and night sweat, feeling hot before periods. So and a lot of people get confused by having like mm. yin deficiency because yin symptoms mm. are all cold and dark. And mm -hmm. so, mm. and if they are having symptoms of more heat, they think that it's more yang access, but actually mm. it is yang access because the yin Less has yin. dropped. Yes, There's that's right. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so you will so get when, more heat conditions. Yeah, your, your understands are correct because your, the yin is cold and cooling, right? Yin deficiency means not cold, not enough cold and cooling. Yeah. So that would yeah, be hot. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's it. But because yin, it's nature's yin, so it's closer to the, the night, to the darkness. So all the symptoms seems to be happening more towards the evening. Mm. So if people have that issue, then you, you look at, they feel hotter at night, they get more excited, have difficulty falling asleep in it, you know, after 9 p.m. And that's all related to kidney yin deficiency. Yeah. And to talk about particularly the period, uh, yin deficiency, uh, that can cause two things. One is uh, scanty periods. So they don't have enough yin to produce the period. So yeah. It can be red, yeah. but then very short and scanty, so smaller amount. Mm. That's a typical sign. A second sign, because the yin causes heat, they can bring the period earlier. So they have a shorter period cycle. Mm -hmm. So the women tend to have like four weeks up to 30 days of period cycle. The lady who has yin deficiency, they might be having two or three days, very close, very short period of bleeding, but they have every 24 days, 25 mm -hmm. days, or some of them even like three weeks, 20 days, mm -hmm. they have period cycle. That quite often indicating the kidney yin deficiency with the heat. Yeah. So if you get somebody that has very, very heavy, painful period, yeah, very yeah. dark, dark mm. crimson with clots, that's mm -hmm. usually to do with the liver, isn't it? Yeah. So that's that's the second major organ that's involving the period cycle. Because as I say, liver is the one that smoothly opens the, the doors for everything. So the mm. so liver is the one that makes sure everything flows smoothly. And that includes the process of a period mm. and the process of emotions. So therefore, if there's trouble with the liver, that could happen on both sides. Uh, emotional side, it can cause people having troubles with emotions, expressions. Yeah. So you could, you could give people swings so they can have Angers, frustrations, but anxiety could also cause people have feeling like depression. Mm. It just swings between two ends. Yeah, so like PMS a pendulum. because of liver. Yeah, yeah, and also because you you know liver is the one that that's in charge of those opening the gate. Yeah. So therefore, everything tends to happen before the door is open. Mm. So that quite often happens before period. Occasionally, it happens in the mid cycle when the ovulation door is due to open that's the time also they have problems people can have yeah mm. and also the pain the different mm. pains that women experience either a sharp pain can be to do with like liver blood stasis or if you have yeah. you know the mm. the dragging pain as well mm. yeah. so just explain the different types of pain and what that yeah, may so, be linked to so so various pain that can indicate different natures of stagnation in chinese understanding you say if there's a pain there's a blockage mm. or there's a pain there's an insufficiency so that's mm. two types of pain the blockages type of pain, they are much more intense and um, they come in either sharp or bloated, mm. ex sort of expanding pain. This is a stagnating type of pain. Mm. Then you also have a deficient uh, type of pain. Those pains are much more background, dull pain. And also mm. they usually happen after periods. If you mm. lose something and they have more pain, that's indicating the deficiency. Mm. Yeah, so what, mm. what foods would you suggest if we've got pains that are linked to more yin mm. deficiency? We need mm -hmm. to sort of like stay away from cold foods, don't we? The general to say, especially when people, ladies having periods, we don't encourage people to have cold 
raw food. No. It's just because these are raw and cold. They're straight away, they give you too much yin, freezing energy. Yeah. Imagine this is like water. Water is like a river. So yeah. um, and the, the, the blood comes out as a river flowing. So you don't get them to really freeze in the body. No. So foods yeah. that link in with like the kidneys, like mm. black foods, like black chia mm. seeds, black wild rice, black rears, mm. and also your your mm. warming foods, you know, like your butternut squashes and your orange foods, turmeric, that's all very good, isn't it? Yeah, they are good. It is weaker in kidney. So therefore, we find that kidney, the ladies who's got a short period cycle, bringing too much earlier, and very uh, scanty period, then you know this is the kidney yin deficiency. Yeah. Then you will need to give them the yin nourish food. Yeah. And it's called about the app, but at the same time, given not the growth of the kidney yin. Yeah. So we need to nourish tension. that kidney yin. Yeah. But then if the people have spleen troubles, which is related to digestion and metabolism, then, then they have loose stools, they tend to have water retention before period comes, and also like put on weight before period comes. Mm. That usually indicating the spleen deficiency. Then yeah. you need to give them something to help the spleen. So there's, like you say, those, those earthy food, yeah. the orange color food, they're good for the spleen. Yeah. Yeah, the black food is good for the, for the, the kidney. kidney. Yeah. Yes. That's great. Mm. So obviously, this is such a big, big area, but we're just touching <laughs> on these. The reason why I wanted to bring you on so that we could talk about this is because so many women are fixated on just the shedding of the lining mm. of the womb as yeah. their periods. And mm. it is so much more than that. Energetically, yeah, right. t- talking with the meridians, talking with the elements, it is so much more than that. And also genetically, isn't it? It's, mm-hmm. it's just there's so ma- many things that you have to take into consideration when we're doing diagnosis. So before we go on to the menopause, let's just talk about women that are trying to conceive um mm-hmm. oh it's sort of like again deeper and wider but generally mm. what type of things we would be looking at and also breastfeeding people mm. that uh, what what are the organs or what are the meridians that we need with breastfeeding and then we can quickly go on to menopause okay so to, to understand the fertility side of that um i think it's better to combine western ideas and chinese ideas so then they can have we have a comparison, but Alice also had a bridge to understand each other. Mm. When the condition for the lady to get a proper healthy pregnancy depends on one, they have a healthy ova. Second, they have healthy hormones to support it, like estrogen and progesterone. And then and they have healthy uterus. So that uterus is you know well circulated, proper temp- temperature calm environment inside and then to help to assist us through the pregnancies and the organs all uh, in chinese medicine they all help to contribute to that say for example the good development and the maturity of ova is determined by the kidney's essence mm. okay so the happening of ovulation is determined by the liver yeah okay the proper production of hormone levels estrogen level is related to the kidney yin and progesterone level is related to keeping young yeah. and spleen chi, mm. right? And a healthy uterus is related to the blood level, which is again related to the spleen's productions and the kidney support and liver's good regulation of circulation and heart and, yeah. and so on. So when we look at the lady's fertility, we need to look at all this. We need to find out uh, the estrogen level if it's enough. If it's not enough, we're looking at to support them with kidney yin. Yeah. If their progesterone level is not enough, then we'll need to support them with kidney yang and spleen chi. Mm. Right? Or they do produce enough. However, they are not coming on the right time. They are late or they're too early. Mm. And that's related to the liver. And yeah. we need to also to regulate the liver. Yeah. yeah? So- and then we'll see if there's not enough blood or it's too much hot in the, in the uterus, then we need to give them enough blood to encourage more blood circulation or calm the blood uh, the, the uterus by various um, you know methods like supporting the productions of spleens and calm the livers and cool down the blood everything mm. throughout the pregnancy. 
Yeah, I know people that have had success stories. Mm. And what we do is not an alternative. It is a complement to allopathic medicine. That's you know, right. it, there mm. shouldn't be a them and us mentality. It's, it's a really lovely partnership. Working together, you can have amazing results. And I know you have cheated many people that, that have successfully conceived. So what about breastfeeding? If new mums are having issues with bringing on milk or having issues with breastfeeding? This is coming from the from inside, outside. You know, when, when you talk about the breast, you have so many meridians going past in the breast, particularly for those meridians that's easily being attacked by the external factors that yeah. could straight away affect the function or condition of the breast, like for example, stomach meridian is one of the major meridian going past in the nipple areas. Yeah. So when you had the external pathogenic factors, then it could cause inflammation in the stomach meridian areas. Therefore, then you can have mastitis. Mm. Then that was straight away causing these blockages of the tubes. Mm. The milk would not come out and it just gets stagnant, right? So that's one of the common things for breastfeeding mother. But then also we have internally linking to those the real productions of breast milk. And in Chinese understanding, the breast milk is the extremities of blood. So therefore, it's part of the production coming directly from the blood supply. Yeah. So therefore, the heart is related to blood, the liver is related to blood, Spleen is related to blood. Even the kidney yin is related to blood. There can be three of these or any of the one of these yeah. having issues. Then that could affect the amount of blood the breast milk produced and coming out from the breast. Yeah. Therefore, then we need to look into which one is contributing to that. I was treating a lady who had difficulty producing enough breast milk. Yeah. In the end, we found out, ah, actually tonifying on her heart helps to produce more milk. breast milk. Yeah. That's the idea of what we were working on and also looking at different meridian to help. Yeah. I think it's also really important to understand when we're talking about these organs, we're talking them about them in an energetic way, in a in a way that where chi passes through and the relationships they all have with one mm. another. Also understanding the meridian pathways in where these meridians, let's just say the meridian of the heart, where mm -hmm. it crosses. Mm -hmm. And it has also not just superficial meridians, it has deeper connections as well yes. and deep meeting points. So mm -hmm. we're always talking about either the liver or the kidneys or the heart. We're not actually talking about the organ itself. We're talking about the energetic pathways, mm -hmm. the meridians and the different relationships they have with mm -hmm. other elements. So that's <laughs> great. Um, mm -hmm. Now let's come on to menopause, which is a huge subject. It's what happens with women. We talked about the cycles of the seven years with, with women. But there's also different yin phases and yang phases, the rise and fall of yin and yang. Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. we go through into the menopausal state, we obviously mm -hmm. have a decline in yin, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so actually the yin phase and yang phase happens in every section of our life. In every month period cycle, you have yin phase and yang phase. Yeah. What's lady? Obviously, in the, we're taking the whole process of life circle. They also have yin phase and yang phase, right? When they were in the front part of their life before menopause, there was more a like tend to be the cold. Ladies seem to be like more colder, so because that's the yin phase of them their their life. They because they lose blood and they you know, most of the time they the warming energy is not enough. So, but then when they come reach to this menopause age, they start to stop the period. But then the young phase start to happen. They start to feel very, very hot. You know, menopause, hot flushes, whoops, like heat waves coming <laughs> up. So that's all because that just the in different, um, you know, cycles of phases. So that is um, reflecting the natural process of that. And men, interesting to watch is they're the opposite. You know, when they're younger, they were hot at night, they were sweating and hot. But then after a certain age, menopause age, then they start to get cold 
and they start to lack of energy. You can see men at the age of 70, they're just sitting there nodding their head. They sleep, yeah. fall asleep on chairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so all of the different mm. factors that when we're talking about, you know, night sweats, we know that that can be linked in with yin deficiency, but also mm. things which are really common with women are brain fog, low mood, mm-hmm. um, poor memory is just horrendous. And that can actually mm. cause a lot of fear. Um mm-hmm the anxiety and depression, and also low libido. We've been talking about yin-yang. As a universe a complete apart, it's a combination of yin and yang together. So women the same. You have yin, and you have yang. Although we talk about a yin phase and yang phase, we talk about declining of your energy uh, substance. It's both declining. Mm. So when you reach the menopause age, and your yin deficiency start to happen, but you also have the qi and yang deficiency start to happen. It depends on uh, individual constitution. Some mm. of ladies, they tend to have more severe yin deficient symptoms. They tend to have um, more like, heat symptoms, like um, hot flushes, night sweat. But then also, some of ladies tend to have the opposite. Their yang and the qi deficiency start to happen. That's the time they start to feel they put on weight. Yeah. They, they feel colder and their lack of energy mm-hmm. and their depressions, you know, sort of low libidos. This is actually a sort symptom of kidney yang, kidney chi deficiency, mm-hmm. or even spleen chi deficiency mm-hmm. symptoms. Yeah, yeah, but the spleen is also mm-hmm. a factor in menopause with everything that maybe drops. You know, we find that our... Mm-hmm. We age faster, mm-hmm. jowls seem to happen, yeah. your boobs mm-hmm. might go south, you know, all of these things. Because <laughs> yeah. the spleen's character is about holding things up, isn't it? Holding things up, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, women all their life, every month they lose blood. So they always tend to have a tendency of blood deficiency. Mm-hmm. The spleen is the leading the factor to produce blood. Mm-hmm. So uh, you can imagine, you know, a the spleen is like mother of the child and the child is constantly losing something and the mother is always in the back trying to catch it up and pick it up and yeah. you know, produce it enough to support the child to move ahead. So therefore, all their lives, spleen has been struggled. Then I, when they come to a certain um, age, spleen finding it's very difficult, you know, the, then, and the, the energy of spleen starts to decline. And that's the time everything seems to be slower. Mm. And that's the time all those major conflicts start to show up. Now you have those major symptoms like yeah. you know, the digestion issues, weight issues, and all the other issues. Probably. Yeah, it mm. just makes, honestly, I mean, I could talk to you for hours and hours and hours. It's just amazing. <laughs> what about mm. those who have had total hysterectomy where they've had the uterus and the ovaries removed? How mm. does that affect the kidneys and the spleen yeah. and the liver? Well, obviously, the reason for people, either they have issues like um, cancers or they have very heavy bleeding, like fibroids or endometriosis. So therefore, they remove all that um, in one way. Just if they'll make the body like not producing enough hormone. Yeah, for example, estrogen or progesterone um, is not uh, produced because you, lo- you lose all these ovaries. But at the same time, also part of your body, the organ has been removed, and then through that, you lose a lot of blood from the mm. operations. Mm. So. That will force the body to stop a certain function, but also taking a major part of the body away and deplete badly the kidneys and the spleen's energy. Mm. And also blood loss contribute to those declining of energy in the liver and, and heart. So there's overall a big oppression of the energies in the whole body. Yeah, and that in mm. turn can actually not give the body that natural decline of yin and yang, mm. but it mm-hmm. actually forces you very Later quickly away. into that that decline. Mm. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's now, a big shock to the body. It yeah. is a big shock, yeah. yeah. So therefore, many people could find it difficult to cope. I can always see a, a good sign of that and bad sign of that because obviously for people who had a severe condition, they cannot really control or properly managed they got to be something that should stop them keep losing for example people had a very big fibroid issues and they constantly losing blood and then in that case i'd rather say okay we stop those loose first than trying to get the others 
other support to get them mm. through that. But then if they do remove the ovary, then that will be certainly a big shock for yeah. the system. Yeah, I'm really passionate about women finding other possible support systems for their health and well-being. And acupuncture mm-hmm. and TCM and herbs and energy medicine are fantastic support for that. Obviously, mm. we would both never, ever tell people to not listen to their doctors. But mm. it is mm. important to understand that there is a fantastic support network out there. What mm. about with fibroids? Would you say that that is more linked with the liver? Fibroid is a form of a new growth. For this new growth to uh, happen in the body that's involving uh, various factors. And the major factor is a certain form of wrong energy. Yeah. They're involving what we call, uh, to start with, is a chi stagnation. Then you can have fluid, a phlegm, we'll call it a phlegm form of uh, a stagnation. At last, there'll be blood stasis. Yeah. yeah. But for this mass to grow faster and bigger, because every month, because Western medicine, they say the hormone stimulations and grows you know, faster. And then once the period finished, they kind of flattened and goes back down. And But in Chinese understanding, for this to happen quickly in a short time and grows very fast, it's a form of yang. So therefore, that's a heat. Yeah. Many of this heat comes from liver or comes from the kidney yin deficiency yeah. or some of the heat in the pericardium or heart. Yeah. Then we will need to look into dispersing all this problem but also help to balance up and reduce the heat Mm. Mm. you're you're so Mm -hmm. interesting and i love this subject so much i'm bringing this in with my energy medicine so it's all amazing for me and i know that you've helped so many people and it's been fantastic yeah to talk about this chinese supplementary and energy healing I have to add one sentence. I think for, completely different from the Western. Say they all say either you have something growing, we remove it by operation, or you have something lacking like estrogens, and we give you like HRT, and that's the only uh, solution to them to help. But what we are doing here is different. We we find out what's wrong, what's imbalance in the body. Mm. We're trying to bring the balance and peace back to the system. Yeah. So it's not giving you extra or remove the the actor out is to help to help your body to cope to reach to a new balance yeah because the Mm. body is amazing it is unbelievable how it heals itself and brings back balance and um Mm. we don't tell you not to have things it's that Mm. obviously people when they're at that stage they get very scared and they need to trust their doctors but also before you have something drastic i would always recommend that you cover Mm -hmm. all bases to see Mm. where you can possibly heal yourself or bring yourself to a stronger state of management of health health and well-being that's right yes um mm. and that's what we do if people want to reach out and see where they can find a tcm practitioner email LACA, yeah. which is the london academy of chinese acupuncture mm-hmm. and mm. they will be able to uh, give you a practitioner nearby yeah. so mm. dr ye Thank you so much, as always. Thank you. Thank you for having me here, too. Oh, it's always a pleasure, never a chore. I am sure that we will be coming back on again because there's <laughs> loads of things that I want to talk to you about and there's loads of things that the listeners love to hear. Yeah. As I said, your last one is the most popular po- podcast on the series, so yeah. you're becoming a bit of a superstar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That's it for this week's Good Vibes Only episode. But there's plenty more wholesome, holistic information where that came from. Check out Marie's website, www.mariereynoldslondon.com or follow Marie on socials. For Marie's products, follow at Marie Reynolds London on Instagram and Facebook and at Marie Reynolds underscore London on TikTok. You can also follow Marie's day-to-day content on Instagram. Follow at Marie Reynolds underscore M-R-L. Thank you so much for listening to Good Vibes Only. If you've enjoyed this episode, we'd love for you to subscribe to and review the podcast wherever you listen to them. And remember to share the episode too. See you next time.